Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. Welcome back for another News I Missed, where I go over News I Missed, because there's there's a lot of it. There's a, not a little bit of it. And without further ado, <clears throat> let's jump right into it. Many members of the blockchain community have been anxiously awaiting the arrival of Ethereum 2.0. The major upgrade to the Ethereum blockchain is set to be released in multiple phases. Phase 0 is expected release. On the Ethereum 2.0 roadmap, apparently is still scheduled to launch this year. While speculation around the exact date remains, Ethereum co-founder and founder of software company Consensus, Joseph Lubin, revealed in a recent interview on the Baseline Protocol YouTube channel that Ethereum 2.0 will indeed arrive soon. He said Ethereum 2.0 is coming. We are now in the middle of what we believe to be the final testnet. We had many smooth operations on the testnet among a lot of Ethereum 2.0 clients built by different teams. End quote. <clears throat> Lubin further commented that without the issues that were resolved on the Ethereum 2.0 testnet, he would be concerned about the mainnet launch of the Ethereum 2.0 beacon chain. Here's a new one. Lubin also mentioned during the interview that Ethereum 1.0 is here to stay F for good. The reason being that Ethereum 2.0 simply serves as a natural transition from Ethereum 1.0. He said Ethereum 1.0 isn't going away ever. Ethereum 1.0 is evolving into Ethereum 1.5, which will be stateless and easily absorbable by Ethereum 2.0. According to Lubin, Ethereum 1.0 is a staking platform that enables the launch of Ethereum 2.0, which uses proof of stake consensus mechanism. As such, the two platforms will be intimately connected. He said Ethereum 2.0 will reach back into Ethereum 1.0 and finalize blocks there, enabling greater security and production of issues of blocks on Ethereum 1.0. Lubin further mentioned that Ethereum 2.0 will be the biggest, most sophisticated DeFi application on Ethereum 1.0. So it appears to me that Ethereum 2.0 is simply... It sounds like another layer and or a side chain. Um, the entire idea before for something like the Lightning Network was that the core of Bitcoin would remain and there would simply be another layer on top of it that would transact transactions. And when these transactions were kind of bunched together, imagine them as a little harsh, but imagine them like injecting the uh, the actual transactions into the main chain in one big batch that would allow Bitcoin to have more transactions per second through the Lightning Network. And this kind of seems to be what it's going to be for Ethereum 2.0 as well. Ethereum 2.0 sounds like another layer that's wrapped around Ethereum 1.0 that will have more transactions on it and at some point inject those transactions into the actual chain 1.0 uh so yeah if you get what i'm saying this is kind of okay fascinating 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 because it seemed like for a while the news that we had and kept on receiving over the last couple of years is that ethereum 1.0 would simply be washed away and simply be called ethereum 2.0 same exact way that tron is on like 4.0 or 5.0 or something like that now no one's really talking about the usage of tron 1.0 anymore so uh the news being that apparently it's going to happen soon. The news that we had before was that it would happen in October and or November. Why do I keep pulling out the microphone? What's wrong with me? Hold on. I have the cord from the microphone, like, against the table. My leg keeps hitting it, and then I can't hear what I'm saying. And the point is, apparently 2.0 is going to happen soon, which is incredible because we had news from Lubin that it wasn't happening until next year, until Vitalik was like, no, sit down. It's definitely happening this year. And the other part is that apparently 1.0 is always going to be here. It's just going to be, I assume, the core layer for it. And um, I have said before, I believe if we get 2.0 this year, I assume the market's going to go completely insane. Because the market has been waiting for some type of a catalyst for DeFi to you know really have a push forward. DeFi is kind of not ruling the market, but controlling the money movements of the market at the moment. And if we can go from five, 15 transactions per second on 1.0 to 1,000 plus transactions per second on 2.0, I assume many new DeFi projects will be launched, explored, and then the staking as well for, yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot. Here's the actual 
um, FAQ page. I'm not going to click through all these things, but you can see all the things that were discussed by um, consensus.net. Yeah, quite fascinating indeed. And without further ado, uh, let's move on. See, I was quiet there for on, on purpose. Next up, in the news that was incredibly popular, but I did not cover news, the anonymous creator of Sushi Swap, Chef Nomi, has abruptly changed course, returning more than 14 million US dollars worth of Ethereum drained from the Sushi Swap developer allocation last week and apologizing to a long list of DeFi industry players. For those of you who do not remember what happened or were simply were not here, uh, Sushi Swap is a fork of, some, I think, of Uniswap. It's like, it, it's a... It's a creation of a creation of a creation. Uh, it launched with great fanfare. I think they locked up, what was it, half a billion dollars. It was some astronomical amount of money over the course of a 48-hour period. And then all of a sudden, the creator um, simply uh, took a bow and took $14 million. And people were like, what are you doing? He then mentioned, according to the news that we got the other day, that he felt that he deserved the $14 million and that this was him backing away from the project. People said, hey, this looks like an exit, exit scam. What are you doing? What's your problem? Um, yeah, so that's where we were. His, his, his words in the article were uh, that Charlie Lee also stepped back from Litecoin and took his own money from it. And therefore, after 48 hours, um, he also had the right to take $14 million from SushiSwap uh, because... He was just pulling a Charlie Lee. Here's the tweet right here. Uh, he said, I have returned all the $14 million worth of Ether back to the treasury, and I will let the community decide how much I deserve as the original creator of SushiSwap. And any currency, Ether, Sushi, etc., with any lockup schedule you wish. That's a bit extreme. Like, he's, 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 he's doing a bit too much. The point is, just don't take $14 million next time. Don't take all the money that you had in the protocol and completely disappear with it, or just simply tell, like, in a, in a, in a decentralized world, once again, the word is DeFi, your community has to decide these things. It shows that there is a head of the snake, or of the dragon, the multi-headed dragon. It's supposed to be a dragon with a thousand heads, but one of them has a gigantic head, and he decides how the entire project goes. So, that's a lot. Sushi Swap is a cloned version of the popular Uniswap, Decentralized exchange, SushiSwap adds to the Uniswap design by rewarding liquidity providers with governance tokens. Distributions in addition to trading fees on the platform. The SushiSwap Sushi protocol initially rewarded users for the... Who cares? I don't care. The, the, the point is, uh, this is major news. It says, I effed up. This one says, returns after community cries, exit scam. And this one says, Chef Nomi of SushiSwap apologizes, return $14 million in Ether. Yeah, it was a little weird, right? Remember we were talking about this as well? It's so many of these things, this is why I personally do not and will not be investing in any of these things until something halfway legitimate comes out. I also don't have the news in here. Um, Binance, I think, also added SushiSwap, and people were like, what are you doing? All these platforms keep adding these brand new coins. Part of the problem is, is that these coins have been out for like... 11 days less than a week and they're being added onto these platforms as if they've been around for years or people have been like begging people like please add this to this to, to your to your platform but they're being added automatically and the I don't think people will learn from sushi swap at all um was this the was this the same exact protocol that had like that um what was the one that like found a bug and like almost was destroyed like 24 hours after it had like 100 million dollars put inside of it the point is yeah the the news of the of the past that i missed is apparently the sushi swap creator has apologized to the community sure why not um and as far as him being like oh let everyone choose how much i get you probably would have gotten away scot-free if you had just taken away a million every six months I assume a lot of these projects with people who are disappearing, like the other project that disappeared three days ago, where that um all all twenty million inside of this project is completely gone because the creator of it just disappeared off of the internet. Um, I assume that they know. This is an assumption. I don't know the facts. I assume that they 
understand or see that these projects are garbage and that the, the prices of these things are probably going to go to zero once all the hype is gone. And therefore, they try to take as much money as they possibly can immediately out of the project simply going, well, I made $14 million, as opposed to saying I made 800000 because the token has collapsed in price. That's the sushi swap news. I'm expecting, what is it, September? I give it by the middle of October. We'll have about three new food coins. They're going to be incredibly popular. Everyone's going to love them and all that stuff. And without further ado, let's move on. Next up, in Sh Shore. Shore, dude, why not news? Co-founder and CEO of Coinbase, Brian Armstrong, recently shared in a Twitter thread his thoughts on Apple's App Store restrictions that do not allow iOS users to earn money using cryptocurrency. The CEO also made claims that Apple told Coinbase that it was not appropriate for the App Store to allow iOS customers to use decentralized finance apps, or dApps, since those apps featured cryptocurrency transactions. The CEO said that Coinbase wanted to improve its app user experience in the wake of Apple's move to allow developers to suggest updates to the App Store policies, following which Armstrong learned of the restrictions imposed by Apple on crypto apps, which he believed would stifle innovation in the community. He said, I feel like Apple customers should be made aware. The crypto apps you use on iOS are not missing some features you want because the terms haven't gotten to them. Those features are being censored by Apple. I greatly admire Apple as a company, but they and think they build amazing products, but their restrictions on the App Store in particular around cryptocurrency are not defensible in my view. And they are holding back progress in the world. <sighs> My friend sent this to me last night in like a screenshot. And maybe I just don't get the drama behind it. But my friend thought this was like the craziest thing in the entire world. That the CEO of Coinbase had called out the, uh, the people from Apple. Apple themselves. I don't really know. The point is, um, I feel like... If people within the cryptocurrency space had spent more time and money um, not listing terrible coins, not listing these other projects and protocols that people don't want, and had spent that money on creating their own app store or like a, a unified one between all the major cryptocurrency projects that we'd have our own place, the same exact thing like with the Samsung thing. Like don't they have also their own decentralized uh, dApp type place? Imagine if, now, he hear me out. Maybe, maybe, no. So, remember when we had news that Tron spent $100 million on BitTorrent? Uh-huh. And then Tron also spent $50 million on something else, and Coinbase spent $100 million on this. A lot of these projects and things like that, if you if you remember the other News I Missed videos, especially when it comes to Coinbase, especially when it comes to other major companies in the cryptocurrency space... A lot of these projects have failed. A lot of the things that they've created that spent $35 million on them because they're so busy just trying to appeal to the very rich have completely crumbled. They failed. No one's using them. They don't even talk about them anymore. And these words have been removed from their actual websites. Imagine if, stay with me here, over the last three years, and that's a very strong time frame. It's 2017. That's when everything completely went insane. You all know this already. Imagine in the last three years, if the $500 million that was spent on garbage products and projects within the cryptocurrency space had been made to unify Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, Lumens, Cardano, Tron, EOS, and all the other chains, at least the top 30 coins, to create their own decentralized applications and put them onto their own platform. Even if it was something as simple as putting it onto a, a website where people could download things and or being able to put it onto their own phone. I feel like $500 million definitely gets you in the door for some type of project like that. But I guess hindsight is, is 2020 in this case. Um, Apple's going to continue doing things like this. This is just completely logical. I have assumed for a while, as have many other people, that Apple is probably um, not only considering or has already been working on the creation of their own cryptocurrency or digital coin because it probably will not be decentralized in any manner and or their own stablecoin. And probably, remember, 
two years ago when uh, you couldn't have advertisements for cryptocurrencies, you couldn't have apps, or like you, you th th nothing associated with crypto was on Google, Apple, Amazon, or any other place, and they were like, no, it's it's simply not right to have these things on our platform. It was because they were trying to probably figure out ways to do it themselves, to make their own money. Why would you let a competitor onto your platform and take away something that you could also create yourself and also make money from? So, um, eh, it's a bit weird. I, I think he tried to be way too diplomatic. I greatly admire Apple as a company. Please, just stop it. Uh, you just want them to be able to put your product onto the store and don't be surprised that they're not allowing... Of course Apple's trying to make their own coin. Of course all this stuff is happening behind the scenes. We may not hear about it for another year, but apparently the drama is, is that you can't use decentralized apps on a centralized platform. Wow, shocker. And with that, I'm in, a, in, in, in a, and even now we still won't see unity within the cryptocurrency space. Think about the next ten years for cryptocurrencies. How far we're going to come, and I still believe that we will not have many unified platforms where we can. We could have created. We already have our own parallel economy within crypto. Imagine if we had created or actively worked towards our own decentralized internet. The entire original idea for Ethereum was to have multiple layers and for us to be able to have our own internet based on top of Ethereum that was completely decentralized. You can post, see, do, read, act however you wanted on this internet because it was decentralized. Imagine if you took $500 million over the course of the last three years, and that's, and that's a low estimate. Even if the people from EOS had also contributed half a, half a billion as well because they made $4 billion from the, from the ICO sale of EOS, you put a billion dollars towards the creation of multiple layers on top of these other platforms so that we could have our own decentralized internet. But no, everyone keeps adding these crappy coins to their platforms and all these other things that people don't want to create sushi coin and hat coin and butt coin. And everyone's happy with it because they, 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 they think that they're going to make extra money. We could have the infrastructure now to completely not even have to worry about anything happening to us. We could have it, but we don't because of greed. Anyway... That's the Apple Coinbase news. And a, a billion dollars. You know what a billion dollars can create? Usually when we hear about these other layers being built on top of Ethereum or on top of so-and-so, they're with like $20 million in funding. You know what a billion dollars? A billion dollars creates five, at least five strong layers on top of, I don't care if it was on top of Tron or EOS or wherever it was. We could have our own internet right now. It may only be able to do around a good 50, 60,000 transactions per second as more updates roll out, but we could have it. It's greed. They're so obsessed with putting crap on their platforms or creating these other crappy co coins thinking that other people are going to use them because they all want a legacy. They, everybody wants to be able to say, I created this coin. I created this value. That's why we have all these crappy coins constantly popping up. Everyone's so concerned with not focusing on the main picture and is getting away from the old system that this is why we're in the crap that we're always in. Anyway, I'm going to finally move on now. I hope you get what I'm saying. Maybe not. Who cares? Let's move on. Next up. Binance continues to chase after DeFi, of course, by giving its new decentralized Binance Smart Chain access to its centralized exchange, or CFI. The global cryptocurrency exchange giant is putting up to $100 million to support DeFi projects on BSC. $100 million to connect DeFi and CFI. Binance CEO Chang Peng Cao announced the plan during the company's World of DeFi Summit on Thursday. It's a bridge between DeFi and CeFi, an integration between Binance the exchange and BSC, the Binance-owned public chain. Binance's users can benefit from elephants of CeFi, futures, margins, savings, DeFi stacking, and DeFi pooling. And DeFi, lending, automated market makers, liquidity, mining, yield farming, according to the company's news release on Thursday. Cool. Why not? I expected some type of a, a link between these things at some point anyway. We, are, we, are, we have basically melted together uh, thus far. 
the the old financial world has a a strong grip on the cryptocurrency space and this is why we keep seeing all these new markets and margins and, and equities and all these other things and derivatives uh, based off of Bitcoin and Ether and all the other coins that they're trying to do it in other countries. It's because they're all they, 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 they're, they're trying to get the markets to really mesh together. And I guess the creation of something that will connect uh, centralized finance and DeFi makes sense. Air quotes. Um, once again, $100 million. Once again, $100 million. And $100 million. And let's move on. Next up in... Sure, why why the heck not? Anthony Pompliano may have just persuaded Jim Cramer, the outspoken host of CNBC's Mad Money, to invest in crypto. In a September 10th tweet, Pomp claimed to have converted the man who once stated that Bitcoin was like Monopoly money. In a recording on his podcast scheduled to be released on the 14th of September, his statement appears to be or have been confirmed by Kramer, who retweeted Pompliano immediately. Was he waiting for him to, to tweet him out? Jeez Louise. Anthony Pompliano is well known for a podcast in which he educates laymen and outright skeptics regarding cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. In a July appearance in the Bill Burt podcast, he successfully convinced comedian Bill Burr to buy Bitcoin and his co-host Burt Kreischer to consider mining. He said, uh, Pomp said that he understands the benefit of Bitcoin better than most. Why not? Um, I don't believe that anyone who's worth over $1 million at this point does not have some type of Bitcoin in his portfolio or some other type of cryptocurrency. I just don't think it's it's logically possible. If, if it is at this point, then I mean good luck to them on their future endeavors. Um, did he convince Jim Cramer? Who cares? Um, did Jim Cramer buy Bitcoin? Apparently he did. Um, I am going to also assume in a lot of these situations, this is of course my speculation. These people don't just simply buy a 10th of a Bitcoin. I feel like they always buy at least a Bitcoin. That is a very big thing in the cryptocurrency space to have over one Bitcoin. If you have one Bitcoin then you've good buddy, you've made it. So, um, I'll maybe, no, I won't. I'm too lazy. I was going to say, I'll try and com compile a video one day of all the rich people who've bought Bitcoin, but it's so many of them at this point, And it's always, it's always Pompliano or Sumpimano or some other person who's talking to some other rich person and they're like, Hey, you should buy it. And they're like, well, I wasn't thinking about it before, but now I'll do it because you told me so. And it's like, I'm pretty sure you had it before the same exact way that other guy, um, Mr. Portnoy, I assume he either had Bitcoin before or was really on the cusp of thinking about doing it because all it took for him was 14 minutes of sitting with the Gemini twins and he put $250,000 into crypto. Stop it. Anyway, um, yeah, apparently Jim Cramer has Bitcoin. This is actually, it's not, it's not a bad thing. It's actually quite interesting because if we get to a point where Bitcoin does rise in value, Jim Cramer is going to be on CNBC's Mad Money and he'll be able to scream and shout and say, Look at the price of Bitcoin. I bought some Bitcoin. I've made 38% over the course of the last four months while stocks have been plummeting and he'll be able to say whatever he needs to say. This then puts out the idea of Bitcoin to millions of other people who are watching him go on about stuff. So it helps for adoption. Um, I still believe all these people already held Bitcoin. Maybe they're just kind of like coming out of the digital closet. I don't know what to really call it at this point, but um, yes, sure. Why not? Another rich person has bought Bitcoin, and without further ado, let's moving on. Coinbase is, of course, in the news. Uh, Coinbase Pro announced that the exchange would be accepting inbound transfers of Loop Ring mm -hmm. from the 14th of September onwards. According to the release, Coinbase Pro users could avail support from the LRC token on all Coinbase-supported jurisdictions except for New York State. Loop ring trading is set to begin on or after 9 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesday, the 15th of September. The announcement stated, they said on Monday, we're going to be adding loop ring because people keep asking us for other coins, but we decided to add this one instead. Moreover, Coinbase Pro said in a blog post that trading on the platform's LRC USD order book will launch in four phases, only after a significant supply of loop ring Loop ring was established on the platform. The four phases include transfer only, post only, limit only, and then full trading. 
So this is another coin that Coinbase is adding to their platform that no one added. I mean, who 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 who, who was asking for this? I I see no hands in the classroom. How many other coins that are actually quite popular have still not been added to Coinbase? Why why add these crappy coins? It's such you you lead people astray by adding these things to your platform because you make people think that these are viable cryptocurrencies. It's nonsense. It's just complete nonsense. Anyway, um, Coinbase is adding loop ring. Excuse me, excuse me. Coinbase Pro, because a lot of people in the comment section keep having um, issues with me um, not clarifying the difference between Coinbase and Coinbase Pro. I apologize. Coinbase Pro is adding another crappy coin that should not be added to their platform. And without further ado, let's move on. None of you have loop ring. Don't even lie. Don't even say, I have loop ring. It's the, some, somebody the, the, the other day, I forgot what coin was being added to what platform. And they were like, it's a really great DeFi thing because it helps me. I'm like, no, you stop. stop no, stop it. Stop it. Next up. Despite the recent price swings in Bitcoin losing nearly $2,000 in a week, the number of addresses containing at least one Bitcoin has marked a new all-time high. Also referred to as whole coiners, no one says that, those network addresses have reached 823,000 different addresses that have at least one Bitcoin. Data analytics company Glassnode, weird name, recently published information regarding the so-called whole coiners. Meaning network addresses containing at least one whole Bitcoin of, yeah, one Bitcoin. Here's the little chart right here for all that happening. As the graph above reveals, these addresses have been continuously increasing since the metric was tracked since 2011. Aside from a few sharp increases in early 2016 prior to the second halving and in late 2017 when Bitcoin gradually att attracted mass attention and reached a new all-time high of 20,000, the rise has been quite gradual. I assume we're going to see this level off in the next couple of years. It is going it is it is already at the point where you need more than 10,000 US dollars to have an entire bitcoin. How many people out there can think logically? How many people you know can buy an entire bitcoin right now? How many people have the patience to buy an entire bitcoin? Not many. So what's going to happen is, is that as we end up getting to a 50, 60, $70,000 Bitcoin and other people are desperately trying to buy any type of Bitcoin because they realize they are late to the race, um, they won't be able to. Did you, did you ever hear, um, what was that thing I, 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 I must have mentioned? I, I know I mentioned it on the other channel. I don't know if I mentioned it here. There was like a survey that was done sometime last year. It's kind of sad. It's, it's actually incredibly sad. They were, they were asking people within the States, if there was an emergency, would you be able to scrape together $300 to solve that emergency. And I think like 51% were like, no, we don't have enough money saved. And then they were like, what was it, what, what if it was $1,000? And I think it was like 10% of people were like, yeah, we'd maybe be able to ask other people, uh, can you lend us some money so we could deal with that emergency? So if you don't have 300 for an emergency, if you don't have 1,000, where are you getting 10,000 from? So uh, nonetheless, 50, 60, 70, 80, 125,000 dollars um, the idea of owning an entire Bitcoin is like a mythical thing almost at this point. A lot of people pride themselves on being able to say, I have an entire Bitcoin because there are only, what is it? Potentially around 12 million of them actually left up for grabs with 6 million of them lost and gone forever. Anyway, um, yeah, this number is going to, I think we'll see a tapering off once we get to around a twenty thirty thousand dollars Bitcoin. Unless rich people like really start throwing their money at it. And without further ado, let's move on. And to finish things off, MasterCard has launched a digital currency testing platform aimed at helping central banks test their digital currencies. The system will also demonstrate how consumers can use central bank digital currencies to pay for goods and services wherever MasterCard is accepted. Global payments company MasterCard announced on Wednesday the launch of its proprietary virtual testing environment for central banks to evaluate use cases of their central bank digital currencies. The company said the platform enables the simulation of issuance, distribution, and exchange of CBDCs between banks, financial service providers, and consumers. Central banks, commercial banks, and tech and advisory firms are invited to partner with MasterCard to assess central bank digital currency tech designs 
validate use cases, and evaluate interoperability with existing payment rails available to consumers and businesses today. And that's basically the news. Uh, I don't think Visa has done something like this, of course. I mean, the, the first one to get other people to use their platform is going to be the winner. Um, it's still fragmented, but that's fine because it's going to be this way. I, I don't assume any actual interoperability will be taking place for a very long time amongst these things. The idea that you create a platform where other people can test their products is still kind of ridiculous. Why? Can anyone tell me why? Oh, wait, like actually tell me why. And it's because we have Bitcoin. It's because we have Litecoin. It's because we have XRP. If I am in Jamaica and you are in Canada and she is in Germany and that other person is in Zimbabwe, we can all use XRP seamlessly on the exact same network worldwide. What all the banks are doing is they're creating their own systems, their own central bank digital currencies, their own platforms, and they will not be interoperable. This is the entire nonsense between all of it because it's going to take them it would take them a millennia to create one platform that they would all be able to agree on using because they all have different rules and regulations and all this other stuff. So what's going to end up happening is we're going to get to a point where they've all created something, but they won't be able to work with each other. There's going to be a third, fourth, fifth, and seventh layer of them having to go through all these little hoops and it'll be simply like Swift, but in a more digital way. It'll be a system where it has to ping somewhere and then ping off of something else, ping to another one. It'll be a lot quicker, but it still won't be interoperable and it'll take them a very long time to be able to do that. The, the idea that they always have is that they believe that consumers simply want digital payments. I don't know what world they're living in. They keep mimicking this over and over. Well, we know we know that consumers really want faster payments. You know, consumers are 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 very digital right now. It's not that. It's that we want to get away from the legacy system. We're tired of inflation. We're tired of you blocking our bank accounts. We're tired of you sanctioning things. We have the system right now at this moment where we can interact monetarily with each other. Quite simply, simply by using Tron. Like a it, 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 it is even you, you know I don't like Tron. But if everyone downloaded the Tron wallet and bought some Tron, we'd all be instantaneously on the same exact network and we'd be able to transact with each other seamlessly. There, 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 there's, there's no doubt in my mind about that. This is why this is... Um, it's, it's logical that they would do this because they are all in a situation where they're desperate to try and make their own version their own digital version of the currency from their country. But it's never just one bank. It's multiple banks trying to do the exact same thing because every single bank wants to be the one to say, like, I created it. I have the patent for it. Therefore, it's me who gets the actual money. Like, imagine being the person who creates the central bank digital currency for your country. And all transactions that flow through said thing, you have the validators for. Every validator as a validating transactions takes one cent per validation of a transaction. You are then the money maker. That's, this is why everyone's fighting to do it, but um, a testing platform for the 9,000 coins that they're going to make, sure. Why not? We'll see exactly how well that goes. I'm still expecting it's going to take at least two to five, I say five years. A good five years before anything slightly resembling what we currently have now in the cryptocurrency space is going to arise. This is what also kind of frustrates me sometimes because so many people, we take so much time adding these crappy coins, adding the, and putting our money into sushi swap. We could have multiple layers on top of Bitcoin that all work perfectly. On top of Litecoin, on top of all these other things, we could have an actual inter complete interoperability between all of our chains right now. But we don't because people keep making these other crappy things that we don't need inside the actual marketplace. Whatever. I'm done rambling. We, we could have a perfect ecosystem right now for cryptocurrencies. Perfect. Multiple chains, multiple layers, all linked together that no one would be able to contest. But alas, um, yeah, this is where we are. I do hope you all enjoyed this news I missed. There's, there's, there's still a bit more news I missed. I might make another video. I'm not entirely sure. For some reason, this last like six days was just jam-packed with like a lot of ridiculousness. Um, I do hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day. I'm very excited about Ethereum 2.0. I'm very, very excited. I was having a discussion with this about about this with my friend uh, very recently, 
and how this could be a major catalyst for the actual bull run. Um, because the part of the bull run of 2017 was actually reliant on the idea, for those of you who don't know, we were supposed to have had, I think that's English, Ethereum 2.0 at the end of 2017. That was also the time frame. Like, bam, we are going to have this upgrade. That was in the news everywhere. This is why we kept on having the news about the Ethereum flipping or Ethereum flipping Ethereum and Bitcoin as the number one coin. Because the idea was if we have all these ICOs running okay at 15 transactions per second, the news that we got back then with Plasma is that we would have over a million transactions per second on top of Ethereum 2.0 at the end of 2017. So I think this is kind of what the, the fervor also is right now in this market. A lot of people are simply believing or listening to the news that the two creators or co-creators of Ethereum, whatever you want to call them, have both announced that Ethereum 2.0 is coming this year. If DeFi is already going crazy now, just imagine when we can do 10,000 plus transactions per second. So this is what I think would propel potentially the prices of the cryptocurrency market into the stratosphere. Hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.